فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روب الخير عائشة رضي الله عنها the wife of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم she was asked about his character his conduct his personality she answered using one word and this hadith is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari كان خلقه القرآن his character and conduct or his personality was the Quran. So that one word summarized the whole character of this masterpiece, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon him. So if we take a closer look at his life, we will find through the books of history, the books known as the books of Sirah, that have recorded every aspect of his life. The way he spoke, the way he treated the Muslims, the way he treated the non-Muslims, the way he treated his family members, the way he resolved matters even prior to him being given the prophethood, the way he addressed community issues and matters, how he was looked at as the most trustworthy person. Amazing. All this points towards the masterpiece. When people did not like him and they swore him, he never swore them back in return. He knew he was not only a Muslim, but he was the messenger. And this is why we all know the story of the lady who had sworn Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are many such stories that are in his seerah and in his history. And he was helping her carry her goods from point A to point B. And as he was walking with these goods, she began swearing him, not knowing it is him in front of her. And he is the one helping her. And he was saying, there is a man in Mecca. You dare listen to him. Very bad man. He is swearing our forefathers. He doesn't agree with our gods. He is doing this. He is doing that. And so, so much she spoke. At that moment, he was silent. He did not say a word. What would we have done? Imagine you give someone a lift, and I've said this in the past, you give someone a lift, they jump into your beautiful vehicle, and they are swearing the owner of this supermarket, and they don't know it's you. They say, that man is greedy, he's stingy, he's jealous, and he is full of himself, and he never helps anyone, and he is like this, and he has divided, and he has what? Minimum, you would stop your car and say, out, out, move. That is minimum. I don't want to say maximum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us blessings. So what happened to our personality? We claim to be the followers of a man who did not do that. We claim to be the followers of a man who did not even think of doing that. What did he do? This woman was swearing him. And when he got to where he was getting to, he says, is there anything else that I can do for you? And she says, no, but what is your name? There came a stage when she asked, what is your name? You see, people of this age, they don't normally help so readily. He was beyond the age of 40. He got Nubuwa and prophethood at the age of 40. And so imagine how old he was and he was helping and assisting a lady, an elderly lady who was not related to him. He didn't even know her. She didn't even know him. For us today, I think a lot of the young would agree that we would only help someone if they really looked good enough to help. Allah protect us. Yes, it happens. Sometimes even the others slightly older fall into the same trap. So someone looks good enough to help, we'll help them based on what they look like, not based on anything else. May Allah make us from those who base our assistance on that which is humanitarian. Remember Muslim, non-Muslim. Some people think these are non-Muslims, we should not help them, leave them. You know, let them carry on. That is directly against this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Who did he help? Not only a non-Muslim, but someone he did not know. What made him help her? Humanitarian grounds. This was an elderly woman. And she needed assistance. She would have probably shuffled on her own, collecting her goods and someone else might have come to her assistance. Why wait for someone else to get the reward when you can get it and you're standing right there. It's an opportunity, golden opportunity. Seize it. So he seized it. And then when he told her his name, he says, you see, there are different narrations that make mention of this. I'm going to say one of them. He says, you see, when I picked up your goods 
and I began to carry them for you, you started talking of a man. And you mentioned this and you mentioned that and you said he is like this and he has sworn our gods and the gods of our forefathers and he has come to split and divide us and don't mix with him and don't listen to him and don't even look in his direction because he is a magician. Whoever looks in his direction, he casts a spell on them and they start accepting his message. And she's listening. He says, well, I want to tell you, I am Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Immediately, and we've heard this in the past, I'm sure. Immediately she said, well, if that's the case, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one you are calling to. And I bear witness that you are indeed a messenger. You are a prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing. Based on what? Based solely on his personality, nothing else. Anything else? Not a word. He did not yet give her da'wah. He didn't tell her Allah is one and this. She knew everything. A lot of the non-Muslims already know a lot. But they are waiting for us to behave in a manner that our messenger has taught us. And they will come through. Believe me.